Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to share a tutorial on how I put the cover of this mini album together and I'm going to be using Graphic 45 Secret Garden Paper Collection. I have some medium weight chipboard here that I've die cut with an album die from AccuCut and I use the same die to cut out a piece of the Secret Garden papers and this is going to be the front of my mini album. Now I am going to do some mixed media altered art on my cover and I'm going to put the paper down and I'm going to do some mixed media art on the actual cover of my mini album and I'm going to pay special attention to leave some binding space over here because I will likely use my cinch to bind the mini album together. It's either that or I might use my crocodile depending on how thick this is going to get. So anyways I'm going to go ahead and walk you through a tutorial on how to put this cover together. First things first is I'm going to use Mod Podge to lay the paper down and you want to be very generous with the Mod Podge when you lay your paper down. And the reason for that is the Mod Podge I've found tends to dry when you apply a thin coat and when that happens it'll peel off easily. So you want to make sure you saturate the cardstock as well as the back of the designer paper with Mod Podge. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Once you got the Mod Podge all down, you want to go ahead and lay your paper down. And I'm not being so mindful about where the Mod Podge ends up because I'm going to be doing a layer of Mod Podge on top of the paper as well. You're going to get a nice thick coat of Mod Podge pretty much everywhere. Now what Mod Podge is, is it's a medium, but it also behaves as a glue or adhesive. What I'm going to do now here is I'm going to use a piece of paper towel and my brayer and I'm going to push down on that so the paper adheres really nice and tight and pay special attention to the middle because that's where it wants to bubble so you kind of want to push out from the middle. And you want to make sure you have a really good coat down and you allow this to dry because when you do mixed media on top of it you don't want the paper to curl up. So you'll see how I have a nice tight bond there of designer paper to chipboard. Now keeping in mind that this is the cover and I'm going to need to cover the back of this too with design paper. Uh, I'm not going to layer on too much onto this until I get the backing on that. But I will do some initial layering on here but not too bulky so that I can still adhere the other side down, okay? So you'll see it's nice and tight. So I have my paper laid down. I'm going to take this Crafters Workshop stencil and it's of the chicken wire. And I'm gonna take some Liquitex modeling paste and my spatula. You could purchase this spatula at Michael's in the art section as well as this Liquitex modeling paste. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some random texture onto, directly onto the chipboard and design paper. So now that I have the stenciling on with the modeling paste and it's dry. What I'm going to do is start layering onto the page and I'm just going to cut some random pieces of lace here. And this is just a roll of lace that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to take some of this flower lace here. I'm just going to cut off a petal. And I'm also going to take some doilies. I am going to cut them up. I am going to randomly place them around my layout. Or not my layout, but the page. And I'm just gonna cut, I only want the decorated trim of the doily, so I'm just gonna cut this white piece off. Okay. 
And what I'm doing is I'm taking some of the Mod Podge I still have here in my little bowl. And let's see, I'm just gonna rub some Mod Podge on there and stick that right on there and rub more Mod Podge right over it. Again, the Mod Podge acts as a sealant, but it's also great as a glue. And I don't know how these are gonna pop out once I start putting layers on top of it, the cover, but the point is to have the dimension, <clears throat> not the dimension, but the, um, the layers down on the page. From here on, I'm gonna go ahead and layer some lace on the cover and I'm gonna place them randomly on the cover and I wanna put them in places where I know that they'll peek out from where I'm gonna be laying most of the dimension on my, on my cover. Here I'm adding some crepe paper or party streamer, if you will, to add some additional dimension and texture. And here I'm going over again with the chicken wire stencil to add more texture to the corners of the page. I used my heat gun to heat set everything. Now I'm putting the paper down on the opposite side of the mini album cover. And I want to do this before I punch the holes for the binding. I'm using sheets of wax paper over the page and then my brayer to push down the page onto the chipboard so I get a nice tight seal. I'm using a cinch by We Are Memory Keepers to punch holes into the binding of the cover. Now it's time to choose metal embellishments and other items that I'll be putting onto the cover. And here I'm taking some Graphic 45 Staples embellishments and I'm just pulling them out randomly. I'm not exactly sure where they're gonna go yet. I have a little tin full of metal embellishments. Here I'm just pulling some random embellishments out and I may not use all of these and I may exchange some of them, but the idea is to take some things out of your stash and play around with them on the cover. Here are some I Am Roses flowers and some Recollections flowers. I'm going to be incorporating those onto the cover. And here I'm just arranging the metal embellishments. I got this little frame from a friend and I decided to use it on the cover. And I found a sentiment from the springtime papers from Secret Garden and it fit perfectly in the frame. So here I'm just sort of arranging things now, trying to figure out where things are gonna go initially. And they may not always end up where I put them when I play around, but at least it's giving me a general idea of where I wanna put things. Now it's time to prime all of the elements using some gesso and the gesso will allow for the Lenny Stamp Gang sprays to take nicely to all of the different elements that you prime up with the gesso. Here I'm about to spray some Lenny Stamp Gang sprays onto the frame, and you'll see I'm starting off with some peach colors, and I'm mixing them up with some green colors, but making sure to heat set in between so the colors don't sort of sludge together. Here I'm taking the sentiment and covering it up with a layer of Mod Podge. And here's a Staples Metal Butterfly that I am manipulating with some pliers to give the wings some dimension. Now I'm adding the sentiment to the back of the frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down onto the cover using E6000 and a little bit of hot glue to set it in. Now I'm going to start putting the metal embellishments down here and you'll see that I use a combination of E6000 and hot glue. The E6000 will bond the metal embellishment down permanently but the hot glue will keep it down while the E6000 is still drying. I've had some questions on past videos about how I know where to lay things when it comes to placement of items on a layout or on a card or on a mini album cover and it's really just about playing and what catches your eye and really it's your creation so what you feel at the time and where you think things should go just go for it and really I don't have a plan when I create 
uh, my layouts or my mini album covers or cards. I typically don't go by a sketch. I go with what I'm feeling at the moment and sort of just play around and place things down temporarily and then when I'm happy with it I put it down permanently and you'll see how I do that on my videos. laid down on the cover it's time to prime everything so take your gesso and gesso away that's what I'm doing here and I have a small paintbrush that I'm using to capture all of the nooks and crannies of this cover with gesso and make sure you catch everything so your sprays take to the colors nicely so here I am using a scrap uh, USPS box that I had received a package in. It's a paper towel and I have the cover on top of wax paper and I am heat setting as I spray. And what I'm doing is starting off with some pinks and peaches. Then after I have a good blend of pinks and peaches, I'll start spraying some of the green sprays. And I'll always start off with the lighter colors and go a little bit darker. Again, you want to make sure that you heat set in between colors so you don't get a real sludgy color. Um, showing up on your cover. So here I have some greens going on now and I'll always go back with some pinks and peaches just so I can get the right color that I'm looking for. So here is the finished look and I really love how it came out. The texture is just amazing as well as the color. And I'll have all the colors listed out in my blog as well as all the products used on this project so be sure to stop on by over there if you're interested in learning what colors I used as well as uh, the products. And I just really am happy with the way this came out. At first I wasn't sure exactly how this would look but I'm happy with the way it came out. So that's a peek of my cover. Here are some photos of the inside of my mini album. The Secret Garden Paper Collection by Graphic45 is so amazing. I really didn't have to do much. Graphic45 came up with some new products for the Secret Garden Collection, which includes some of the cardstock tags and pockets, as well as the banners and the florals, the flowers. They are amazing. And just the tags and vintage labels that come in the paper collection it makes creating so easy and then you combine that with the chipboard tags and the stickers and you really have everything that you need to coordinate and create a mini album so I hope you enjoyed my project share for today be sure to check out Graphic45 over at g45papers.com. This project will also be featured on the Graphic45 blog at g45papers.typepad.com. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care.